When I think about whole heart, there is one scripture that comes to mind. Our founding pastor, Pastor Mark, used to use this scripture all the time in relation to ministry situations, particularly anxiety. And I've seen people set free from the truth in this scripture. And it may be one you're not familiar with, but I encourage you write this down. I love it in so many translations. And I think if it, if it speaks to you, you may want to go through and read it in other places. But today I'm going to read from the Amplified translation. It's 1 John 3, 18 to 22. And we come in in a letter where um, they are speaking particularly to the people of God, assuring them of their salvation and speaking to them about how to live out um, their salvation. And in 1 John 3, 18 to 22, it says, Little children, believers, dear ones, let us not love merely in theory, with word or with tongue, giving lip service to compassion, but in action and in truth in practice and in sincerity, because practical acts of love are more than words. I love that, but let's not just stop there. But it's saying by this we'll actually know without a doubt that we are of the truth and we'll assure and quiet our hearts, our consciences before Him. Whenever our heart convicts us in guilt, for God is greater than our hearts greater than our feelings. He knows all things. Nothing is hidden from Him because we are in His hands. Another translation says He knows all about us. Beloved, if our heart does not convict us of guilt, we have confidence, complete assurance and boldness to go before God and we receive from Him anything that we ask because we are carefully and consistently keeping His commandments and we do the things that are pleasing to Him. It's an incredible scripture. It says whenever our heart condemns us, convicts us, whenever our conscience comes against us in guilt and condemnation, other other translations, the message says, the debilitating self-criticism even when there's something to it. And sometimes it's out of our own activity or inactivity, the things that we have done or haven't done, that we feel guilty, condemnation, worry, and actually our own hearts and conscience, they accuse us. We jump on board with what the enemy is doing, accusing us. The beautiful freeing truth in this scripture is that even when that happens, God is greater than our hearts. He's greater than our feelings, greater than than the, the convicting voice of ourselves, of our hearts. And when we remember who God is and that we are actually a child of God, we are able to boldly enter into the presence of God. I love this letter because I've written centuries ago, it speaks to us because we can all find ourselves in doubt, in guilt, in condemnation. And even if you might find yourself in that space today, may you take encouragement in the fact that God is greater than your feelings of guilt and condemnation, of doubt, of fear. And we know the scripture in Romans you're familiar with, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But even when we condemn ourselves, God is greater than that. But may you find yourself in assurance of the fact that you are a child of God. Earlier in this scripture, it talks about the fact that Christ died for us so that we can stand before God blamelessly. We have been adopted in as sons and daughters of God. And when we know that truth, that we are a daughter of God, at the end of that scripture, it says, we boldly enter into the presence of God. I think about myself as a daughter uh, approaching my own dad and knowing how I was so unconditionally loved that I could ask for anything. And I just, when I apply that to my own relationship with my heavenly father, the fact that I can boldly enter into his presence and ask anything of him when my heart does not condemn me. I just want to read for you just to wrap up the message translation of that scripture. It says, when friends, when this is taken care of and when we're no longer accusing and condemning ourselves, we are bold and free before God. We're able to stretch out our hands and receive what we ask for 
because we are doing what He said, what pleases Him. And when we align ourselves with His command, it's what He told us to do, love each other, and we keep these commands, we are deeply and surely in Him. And this is how we experience His deep abiding presence in us by the Spirit He gave us. Can I just pray for you today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that even when our hearts condemn us, even when our conscience convict us, that you are greater than our hearts. Lord, I pray for the women listening today. I pray that there would be freedom found in the fact that you know all things and that when we come before you, covered by the blood of Jesus, there is no condemnation for us. May there be freedom found for the women listening today and may they be bold enough to enter into your presence, knowing that they can call you Father and hold out their hands before you. May you be filled with the Holy Spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.